Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today, I am finally able to review AMD's answer to NVIDIA's recently released GeForce GTX 1650 Super. Codenamed Navi 14, we finally have the Radeon RX 5500 XT on hand. And while this is technically a day one review, it's not the first 5500 XT review to hit the net. Some lucky reviewers managed to get their hands on OEM versions, which allowed them to test ahead of time, or at least ahead of today's AIB release, where we can test models from Gigabyte and MSI. And their initial results weren't great, but of course, without any solid pricing information, it was hard to gauge just how good or bad Navi 14 would be in terms of value. And that's what we plan to work out today. But before we get too far into today's review, Today's video is sponsored by Gigabyte and their special end of year offer for Australian and New Zealand customers. Right now, if you buy any Gigabyte X570 motherboard with a Ryzen 7 or Ryzen 9 CPU, you'll be eligible for a free Gigabyte Gen 4 500 gigabyte SSD valued at $250. Alternatively, if you purchase a Gigabyte Radeon RX 5700 XT graphics card, you'll receive a bonus Gigabyte M.2 NVMe 512GB SSD valued at $120. So for more information, please check the link in the video description. Okay, so on hand today to evaluate just how good the 5500 XT is, we have two new AIB models on hand for testing. We have one from MSI and one from Gigabyte. MSI sent over their Gaming X model and Gigabyte their Gaming OC version. And I have to say both do look very nice. Now, before we jump into the benchmarks, let's just quickly talk about the 5500 XT. The tiny 158mm square die packs just 1,408 cores and 88 texture units, almost 40% fewer than the RX 570. There's also half as many ROPs, and this has reduced the memory bus from 256-bit down to just 128-bit wide, which sees the memory bandwidth halved to 224GB per second. Still, AMD is using GDDR6 memory, and you can purchase the 5500 XT with either 4 or 8GB of VRAM. I have the 4GB model on hand, but I won't be featuring it in this video. Rather, I'll be providing a detailed 4 versus 8GB comparison soon. For now, the focus is on the 8GB version. But getting back to the cores for a moment, they're clocked at 1670MHz for the base and 1845MHz for the boost, which means they're clocked 7% higher than the 5700 cores. However, because there is a lot less of them, the TDP has been reduced from 180 watts down to 150 watts. Now, there is really no delicate way of putting this, so I'm just gonna say it. The 8GB version of the 5500 XT comes in at an MSRP of $200 US. And frankly, that seems like a lot given the specs. The 4GB model, that'll set you back $170. And again, that seems like a lot of money for a 4GB graphics card in very late 2019. Anyway, we'll review the price to performance offered by the 5500 XT towards the end of the video. For now, let's just check out the test system specs and then get into the benchmarks. The test system used includes a Core i9-1900K clocked at 5GHz with 16GB of DDR4-3400 memory, and the exact graphics card models used for testing can be found in the video description. Though, please note the Gigabyte RX 5500 XT Gaming OC was used exclusively for all the 5500 XT testing in this video. Finally, we have 12 games to look at and all have been tested at 1080p and 1440p using medium to high quality presets or settings. So let's get into the results. First up, we have shot off the Tomb Raider and with the high quality preset enabled at 1080p, the 5500 XT was good for 77 FPS on average. Not bad performance, but not great either given the RX 590 was a little faster and the 1660 Super was almost 20% faster. Even at 1440p, we see much the same, and despite the extra VRAM, the 5500 XT can't gain on the 1660 Super here. Here we see that the 5500 XT does manage to edge out the RX 590 in Assassin's Creed Odyssey with an average of 71 FPS, making it 4% faster, or a mere 3 FPS. The 1660 Super was 11% faster, though the 5500 XT was 8% faster than the 1650 Super. Moving to 1440p, and we see very similar margins. The 5500 XT is still on par with the GTX 1660, which also puts it on par with the RX 590 and GTX 1650 Super. So not a great result here for AMD's new $200 US offering. 
Using the high quality settings in Red Dead Redemption 2 may have been a mistake with these lower end GPUs, as frame rates are quite low, even at 1080p. Also, please note the 3GB 1060 didn't work as the texture settings were too high, and you can't override memory restrictions in this title. So rather than give the 3GB 1060 an advantage with the medium quality texture setting, I just opted to skip it for this one. Performance at 1080p for the 5500 XT is pretty disappointing. It only matched the RX 580 and the GTX 1650 Super. And things weren't much better at 1440p. Using the high quality settings, the game wasn't really playable, so you'll need to drop down to medium if you hope to play at this resolution with anything less than an RX 5700 or RTX 2060. The 5500 XT did deliver a silky smooth 106 FPS on average at 1080p in World of Tanks, but that really was only enough to see it positioned as a midfield runner in our testing, only matching the 3GB 1060, though it did put it on par with the RX 590, but still a pretty unexciting result. The 1440p results weren't much better, here it's a fraction slower than the RX 590, and really no better than the much cheaper GTX 1650 Super. Performance in Far Cry New Dawn is typical of what we've seen so far. The 5500 XT is a smidgen quicker than the 590 and just 6% faster than the 1650 Super, which frankly is a pretty miserable result for AMD given they want to charge $200 for this thing. Not much difference at 1440p, the 5500 XT and 590 are neck and neck, while the 1660 Super is well out in front delivering nearly 20% more performance, which isn't great for AMD given Nvidia are only charging 15% more. Here we see that frame rates in Rainbow Six Siege are strong at 1080p using the very high quality preset, which is one notch down from Ultra, though we are manually cranking the render scale back up to 100%. The 5500 XT was still slower than the RX 590 and really not a great deal faster than the much cheaper 1650 Super. Much the same as seen when testing at 1440p, the 5500 XT only manages to keep pace with the GTX 1650 Super and RX 580. Here we see that the Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order performance at 1080p is pretty average. Here the 5500 XT is slower than the GTX 1650 Super and the old GTX 1666 GB. Basically it finds itself situated between the 590 and the 580. Moving to 1440p allows the 5500 XT to match the 1650 Super and 3GB 1060, so yeah, not a particularly great result here either. Using the high quality preset at 1080p in Battlefield 5 allowed the 5500 XT to average 83 FPS in our test, which sadly meant it was only able to match the RX 580 and render just 3 FPS more than the 1650 Super on average. Here we see though that the more limited 4GB VRAM buffer does appear to hurt the 1650 Super at 1440p, and now the 5500 XT is able to deliver 13% more performance with 62 FPS on average. But given it costs 25% more, I wouldn't go getting too excited about this news. The Call of Duty Modern Warfare results are very similar to what we've seen so far. The 5500 XT is basically on par with the RX 590 and GTX 1650 Super. Even at 1440p, the 5500 XT can't get away from the 1650 Super, and it even manages to slip behind the RX 590, so again, not a great result here. Metro Exodus was tested with the ultra quality preset enabled as the 5500 XT and equivalent Nvidia GPUs averaged over 60 FPS at 1080p. The 5500 XT came in behind the RX 580, so not exactly a stellar result. It was also 10% slower than the RX 590. Moving up to 1440p saw the 5500 XT drop down to an average of 51 FPS, which again meant it was a few frames slower than the RX 580, though at least in this title it was quite a bit faster than the GTX 1650 Super, especially when looking at the 1% low performance. Here we see that the 5500 XT once again trails the RX 580, this time in F1 2019 at 1080p using the high quality preset. Granted, 121 FPS on average is pretty great gaming performance. It's still less than what you get with a 580, 590, GTX 1660, or 1660 Super. The 5500 XT does match the 580 at 1440p, making it 5 to 6 FPS slower than the 590, and 11% slower than the 1660 Super. Last up, we have Gears 5, and here the 5500 XT is able to match the RX 590 with 75 FPS on average at 1080p, using the high quality preset. Here we also see that the 1660 Super is 14% faster, 
And given that it costs 15% more, it looks like AMD has just slotted into Nvidia's current pricing scheme rather than compete with it. Here's a quick look at total system power consumption in Gears 5 and F1 2019. As you can see, the 5500 XT is a big improvement on the 580 and 590, reducing total system consumption by around 30%. The 1660 Super still use slightly less power, but at this point, I feel it's a bit of a non-issue. Overall, power consumption is good, not amazing for a 7 nanometer GPU, but it's comparable to where Nvidia are at right now. Well, I've got to say, given the price, the 8GB 5500 XT didn't look too hot in any of those benchmarks. But before we jump into the cost per frame analysis, let's just look at the average performance across the dozen games tested at 1080p and 1440p. No surprises here. On average, the 5500 XT was indeed slower than the RX 590 and only 3.5% faster than the RX 580. Moreover, it was just 5% faster than the GTX 1650 Super and 13% slower than the GTX 1660 Super. The results at the 1440p resolution are much the same. It's again a whisker faster than the 580 and slightly slower than the 590. So let's move on to check out the cost per frame data. Okay, well, as expected, this doesn't look particularly great. Basically, the Radeon RX 5500 XT 8GB comes in offering the same level of value as the GTX 1660 Super at $2.27 per frame based on our 12 game sample. That means you'll be paying a 4% premium per frame over the RX 590 at the current prices. Worse still, the 5500 XT comes in at almost 20% more per frame than the GTX 1650 Super, and we are really talking about a similar level of performance here. Granted, the 8GB 5500 XT does pack twice as much VRAM, but still not a good result for AMD and those seeking a budget graphics card. It's also worth noting that the 8GB 5500 XT costs around 14% more per frame when compared to existing 8GB RX 580s. So not exactly progress that, is it? But what about the cheaper 4 gigabyte version that I'm yet to test due to time constraints? Well, AMD says with medium to high quality settings at 1080p, the 4 gigabyte model is around 5% slower on average, so that would place it on par with the GTX 1650 Super in terms of performance. But let's just say the performance goes unchanged. So we'll stick with 88 FPS on average, an absolute best case scenario for sure. What this means is AMD can't beat the GTX 1650 Super when asking $170 US for the 4GB version of the 5500 XT. They just can't win that battle. Moreover, for the same money, I think I'd rather just own an RX 580 and get twice as much VRAM. Again, how is this progress AMD? I'll just note again that I will be testing the 4GB model over the next few days, so expect a detailed 4GB versus 8GB analysis soon, but I can't see us ending up with a good result for AMD here. Well, I've got to say that was massively disappointing and the performance isn't the real issue here. The 5500 XT was never going to blow your socks off. The issue is the price. AMD's just made no attempt to undercut Nvidia. They've just slotted the 5500 XT into Nvidia's existing pricing structure. So essentially they've rocked up to the party late and offered us nothing new. It's a little crazy to think they were selling us a 232 millimeter square die for $200 or less, and they've been doing so for a little over a year now. And then we finally get an update that's considerably smaller at 158 millimeters squared, so 32% smaller, and it offers the same level of performance and costs just as much. No doubt 7 nanometer supply is playing a big role in that price, but I doubt many of you watching this review care about that. It's more of an AMD problem. But whatever the case, it looks like AMD may have shot themselves in the foot here by aggressively competing with three-year-old Polaris GPUs. Though ultimately, they did have to do this in order to remain competitive in one of the few GPU price segments they're actually competing in. And this all started with the RX 480 back in June of 2016 at a price of $240 US for the 8GB model. A year later, it was refreshed as the RX 580 at a $10 discount, and by late 2018, was retailing for under $200. Then, as I said a moment ago, for about the last 12 months or so, they could easily be found for just $170, and that's a 30% discount on where this silicon began three years ago now. 
But AMD's own products aside for a moment, the 5500 XT struggles to compete with what Nvidia is already offering in the 1650 Super and 1660 Super. Therefore, I see no reason to wait for 5500 stock to arrive and then try and hunt one down at the MSRP. There's plenty of 1650 Super and 1660 Super graphics cards selling at or very near the MSRP, so I just grab one of those or alternatively snag a cheap RX 580. Power consumption of the 5500 XT has been greatly improved over the RX 580, but do gamers really care about that? It's not like you can't easily power the 580 or 590 with a cheap 400 watt power supply. And after all, remember the power consumption results shown here in this review were recorded in our overclocked Core i9 9900K test system, so expect total system power usage to be considerably lower with a Core i5 or Ryzen 5 processor. So, while lower power consumption is certainly a nice bonus, and should result in cooler and quieter graphics cards, I feel most gamers looking at spending $200 or less on a graphics card really just care about price to performance, and here the 5500 XT offers nothing new. If anything, it's a small step backwards. And finally, just a quick side note regarding AMD's new Radeon software features found in the Adrenaline 2020 edition. They're impressive and AMD should be commended for their work here. Adding features such as integer scaling for all Radeon GPUs, at least those based on the GCN architecture and newer, is impressive and Radeon Boost looks interesting, though I doubt I'd use it, but still a nice option to have and I'm sure some gamers will find it useful. Anyway, wrapping this up, the 5500 XT is a very disappointing release in my opinion. I just hope AMD get a bit more aggressive on pricing over the next few months. So fingers crossed that happens and that's really all we can do at this point. And that is going to do it for this review. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, subscribe, do that YouTube-y stuff. And if you'd like to get more involved with the channel and support Harbour Unbox directly, then consider jumping over to our Patreon page. There's a few different tiers there. You get access to our monthly live stream, so you can live chat with us there. We've also got our Discord chat, which you can chat with us there. And we also offer merch if you want to support us in a different way and get some cool clothes and other items, mugs and things. So we have the uh, limited edition Happy Unboxing sweater. So... Us Aussies call these jumpers, but yeah, sweaters elsewhere. We also have t-shirts and then we have some cool hoodies and other things as well. So if you're interested in that, link is in the video description. But above all else, thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.